Hello, I'm back and making a video. In this video, I want to look at the JavaScript input event. Now, you might be wondering, why, why are you looking at the JavaScript input event? Well, first of all, it's a very useful event. Uh, the name input doesn't exactly describe what it does, so I feel like that's a nice thing to clear up in this discussion. That, but I feel like I'm having a discussion with you, even though you're not actually there. But you are there. You're a real person. Um, and uh, But mo one of the reasons in particular why I want to make this video is I attempted to do exactly the same thing. You can go back and find another video where it just like didn't work and I was trying to update stuff. So one thing to make sure you're doing is that you have the most recent copy of the P5.js library. Now if you're watching this video like a year from now, you'll be using the, I don't know, the glork.js library or whatever, so this won't be relevant anymore. But if you're actually here in 2000, October 2015, uh, make sure you're, you're working with one of the most recent P5.js and P5.dom uh, library so that this particular event function will work. Okay, so what do I want to happen here? This is a web page. It's got some text on it. It's got a text input box, and it's got a slider. Now, nothing is going to happen right now. I'm going to type some text in here, which that'll work, and I can even move this slider. The goal that I want for this example is for when I type text in there, I want the paragraph above to update in real time with that text. When I move the slider, I want that paragraph up there, the font size to change. These are exciting moments that will happen when we get this to work. So first, I, let's, so, so first let, let, let's look at the code that's at least gotten this so far. Now again, I'm doing the thing that I, that I feel confused and torn about, which is that I'm creating these DOM elements with the P5.js library. They certainly could be written into the HTML file directly and accessed from P5, and that's a topic for a video I will make next uh, using the select and select all functions. But for right now, just to demonstrate the idea of the event, it's easiest if I make the paragraph with some starting text, I make the input, the text input, ooh, I don't, okay. So I made this mistake the other day, and I'm gonna correct it. The event that I want to demonstrate is called input. And it actually probably would work fine, but I think it's particularly confusing for me to name a variable input and then start demonstrating this other thing called input. So let's change that to something like, <laughs> if only you were an actual person there, you would say, shout out a good variable name. And all I can think of is like porcupine, but uh, which makes no sense in this context, but we could use it. No, no, let's not use it. That's too crazy. <laughs> Uh, let's just say a, a text, text field, text box. Let's call it text box. That looks pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to call it text box. Text, text mech, like text mechs, no, text box. It's like spicy, but not too spicy. I don't know. What to, <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, I make the text box and the slider. All those things in the page, you can see I've made them with code. Now, how do you attach an event to a particular DOM element? Now, there are many ways to do this using all sorts of frameworks and libraries and native JavaScript. I'm going to show you how to use the P5.js framework. So certainly I could do something like the mouse pressed event, which I demonstrated in a previous video, but let's start, I'm not even going to start with the changed event. I'm just going to say something like text, oh, the input event, sorry. Uh, I'm going to say textbox.changed do something. So with this lovely wonderful little line of code does is it says there's an event called changed. When the content of the text box changes, execute a function called do something. Now if I ran this code, would this work? It would not. <laughs> do I ask weird questions to myself while I'm standing here? Apparently yes. But would this work? It would not work. Why? Because do something is a function that I have to define myself. So now I'm going to say function do something. And I could just say something like print line, you know, like see a message in the console. But really, what do I want to do? Maybe what I want to do is update the paragraphs text with the text boxes text uh, uh, value. So this is kind of like a bit of a tricky line of code right here, but let's look at what it's doing. The HTML function is a function that's part of the P5.js library that changes the HTML content of a DOM element. So the paragraph's content should change to what? The text box's value. What's the text box's value? The thing that you typed into that text box. So now, if we run this, I should see, right, when the text box changes, Update the paragraph with what's in the text box. Let's do that. Hello. This should, it's not updating. Why isn't it updating? Well, it turns out that I've misled you, and I've sort of led you to believe that the changed 
event, the changed event, is an event that is triggered anytime the content changes. It's actually not. The changed event is an event that's triggered whenever the browser deems you to have finished your action. <laughs> so this is kind of like a vague, strange concept that, you know, but somebody somewhere, this like Borg of browser designers, uh, has uh, decided what this should be. And it happens to be, I <laughs> hope this works, when you hit the enter key is one up. So if I hit enter, hey, it worked. Oh, that's so lucky. When I hit enter, in the text box, that's when the changed event happens. Also, by the way, I could hit tab. I'm writing my name. And then watch this. You can't see, but here on this keyboard, I'm going to hit tab. One, two, three, tab. It also updates. So this is an event that fires when the user has changed their action. But what I want is for that to continuously change any time you, any, anytime it changes for whatever reason, anytime you type any single character. And that my friends, is the input event. So this particular event, this particular event, the input event, is an event that happens anytime the content of the text box changes. Do something is the callback, right? It's the function that gets triggered when the event occurs. That function is, we call back, call, call, like a, that's a bird call, I don't know, what to, uh, we call back to the function. That was gonna go somewhere interesting and it just didn't, so I apologize for that. Okay, so let's run this again. Look at this and then say, hello, look at that. Oh, that is so nice. This is constantly changing no matter what I type. I could just do this all day long. It's just fun. Real-time quick interaction is fun. You know what's actually fun is like going outside and like playing a game of capture the flag with friends and socializing. But you know, if you're by yourself in a room with a camera and a node kit web browser, then making the text box change in real time is fine. Now, let's add the slider. So all I need to do, and this do something, I don't really like the name of that, so I'm gonna change that to like update text. And then I'm gonna make another event, slider.input, uh, update font size. Oh, that's the worst. Whenever, you know, update, let's just say update size. So now I'm gonna write another function called update size. And let's actually, sorry about this, let's actually put it up here so that we can see now. So when the text box changes, the paragraph element is updated with the contents of the text box. When the slider changes, what happens? So in a previous video, I looked at the style function. The style function is a function that is a way to uh, programmatically assign style information, CSS uh, uh, tags essentially, to a uh, DOM element. So I'm gonna say paragraph.style and say, well, now I honestly don't know anything about CSS and I can never remember what things are called. But I'm just gonna like look up to the ceiling of this room and think for a second and hope that the correct term is font size. Now, you might think all I would need to do now is say slider.value, right? Because this sort of makes sense, right? I made this slider that, and remember, this is the minimum value of the slider, the maximum value. I, I like want to zoom over here so I can point to it. This is me being ridiculous. But this is the minimum value of the slider, 64 is the maximum value of slider, and 16 is the starting value of the slider. So in other words, Whatever value is here should be assigned to the font size. It's 16, I slide down, it's 10, I slide all the way up, it's 64. Now, you might think that work would work, and it's, I don't think it's going to. It's not working. So what's the issue? <laughs> what's, the, what's, what's the problem? The problem is that CSS expects you not just to give it a value for font size, but a unit of measurement. And there's different ways, other, all sorts of, you could, some typography genius person, knowledgeable person, please come and enter this internet world and add some information below in like a comment that explains about different types of units. But here's one that I think is a useful one, point, PT. So what I actually, oh, the camera went off. <laughs> uh, what I actually need to add, and I'm coming back here, is plus PT. So what this is doing, again, it's not like adding 10 plus the letter P, the letter T. The plus operator with text joins those things. So the goal is really, and I, I probably should have done this in two steps, if I were to say something like 24 point, 
and run this, whenever I move the slider, it's going to change it to 24 point. But that's not what I want. I want to change it to the slider.value followed by PT. And I, I guess I got font size right. And now when we do this, I can write whatever, any text I want, and I can use the slider to change its size dynamically. Now, this is kind of interesting how the, note, note how the flow of a page works, right? Uh, as that paragraph gets bigger, the other content gets pushed down, which makes for a kind of strange, goofy interaction, which I kind of like in this moment. But uh, you know, certainly if I wanted to fix that, I don't know if fix is the right word, but alter that behavior, I could put the paragraph below. And now if the paragraph was below, I could type some text and it would seem maybe a little less weird than change its size dynamically. So now, hopefully you see how you can create these interface elements like a text box, a slider, there are other ones too. Um, and anytime anything about that element changes, whether it's the text in the text box or the value of the slider, you can trigger an event that alters something else that's happening on the page. So I might say to you, like, how far can you take this? How many sliders can you add? How many, can you control different paragraph elements? Could you, as you're typing, like each letter is like a new DOM element that's randomly absolute positioned somewhere on the page? What kind of creative graphical experiments can you make with just this simple idea? And that is this video about the input uh, callback. And I'm going to stop this video and go on to the next one, which I believe I'm going to look at select and select all. I have to look at my list. <laughs> anyway, just look and you'll know. Okay.